Good evening everyone and welcome to an old Cyclone Chasers update. Tonight, the 11th of January 2013. Tonight we have to get through Tropical Cyclone Norel and what it's going to do in the medium to longer term. We also talk about a new Tropical Cyclone developing off the northwest coast of the Kimberley. And then we also look in the far long term at a new possible development in the Gulf of Carpentaria that could finally bring the start of the wet season to the far north of Queensland. Okay, the great news of the day with Tropical Cyclone Norel is that today it's taken a much more southwesterly track as opposed to a south-southwesterly track, which now places it in extreme doubt of ever making landfall in the warning area. However, in the longer term, some of the some of the computer modelling that we've got access to will show that the system starts to track more in a southerly direction before possibly tracking back to the south-southeast as either an extra tropical cyclone or a very, very weak tropical cyclone towards the central part of WA. So that's the good news. It is a Category 4 system. It is a very significant tropical cyclone, but as I say, thankfully, it's not expected to directly impact the coast, at least not as a severe tropical cyclone. In saying that, the Bureau of Meteorology continue to uh, have this area on your screen here in the warning zone all the way south to Carnarvon, including Exmouth. Exmouth probably the most likely to see some gales, probably about 40 to 50 percent probability of seeing some gales there in Exmouth. Also, Carnarvon in the longer term ex expected to see 40 to 50 percent chance of gale force winds as well. But once again, thankfully, those severe, th those damaging, destructive and very destructive core winds are not expected to affect the coastline. We are watching another tropical low possibly forming off the uh, northwest coast though and we'll talk a bit more about that one in the medium term. That one may have slightly more potential of actually affecting the coastline directly. So let's have a look what the JTWC are saying about this system. Okay, so this is the JTWC track. Now you can see once again, most of the gale force winds are outside of this Exmouth region, uh, outside of pretty well all of WA's coastline. And hopefully with that track, the actual system, by the time it gets to the west of about Geraldton, will not have much, much guts to it at all. It'll be more around the 40 or 55 knot mark by the time it's around here, which is about a Category 1, early Category or low-end Category 2 type tropical cyclone, possibly extra tra uh, transitioning into an extra tropical cyclone. Look, folks, uh, the, the, the guts of the story, the moral of the story here is the fact this, this system is unlikely to hit the coast now as a tropical cyclone. You may still experience some gales here on the west coast because of a pressure gradient squeeze between a high and the tropical cyclone itself, but overall the tropical cyclone is not expected to uh, make direct landfall as a tropical cyclone, or at, at least as a significant tropical cyclone. Let's go through some of the ensemble modelling now that shows what this system will do over the next five days. Okay, now if we look at the GFS Ensemble, very tight agreement. Now this model's been performing very well with this system in the past 24 hours, so we do pay a fair bit of attention to this model at the moment, and the JTWC track forecast very much mirrors what we're seeing here on your screen. This is the probability of the cyclone being within 120 kilometres of a certain point on this map over the next five days, and you can see very tight track agreement here between the 24 model members, oh, sorry, the 20 model members, of the system tracking to the south southwest before eventually being recurved to the southeast. But look, folks, by the time it gets into this area and by the time it starts to look like recurving back towards southern WA, it is very unlikely to be a tropical cyclone. The the sea surface temperatures in that region are going to be too low to sustain the warm core of a tropical cyclone. So, uh, by all rights, this system should now no longer be a threat to the coastline for any more than damaging, or at least gale force winds with damaging wind gusts. So, look, WA has dodged a bullet with this system, and while we'll talk a little bit more about where it's going, we will now uh, start to drift our attention to the next system which will develop off the Northern Territory, push to the west, uh, possibly develop off the North Kimberley into a tropical cyclone and then we'll talk about where that one might go uh, as the as the crux of tonight's thing. We will have a couple of look at, uh, a look at a couple of satellite images and just to see the structure of this tropical cyclone Norel which is now a lot better, a lot better defined. We can actually see an eye on satellite so it does look pretty impressive on satellite so let's have a look at a couple of those. 
Okay, this satellite image was at 5.30 p.m. Now, you can see a perfectly structured cyclone here in this image. You can see the eye very, very well, very well defined there. You can see a very symmetrical type tropical cyclone with its outflow out here. Uh, you can see this cirrus wispy outflow that's a really high cloud that's coming out of the cyclone. Uh, you can see these really heavy bands of rain well outside of the cyclone centre that, uh, that have got thunderstorms embedded in them, uh, approaching the Kimberley and Pilbara coastlines, particularly the Pilbara coastline between about Exmouth and Port Hedland. So you can see that very clearly in this satellite image, but once again a very well defined tropical cyclone. On water vapour imagery you can see that definition even better. You've got very very well defined eye right in this region here where my cursor is there. Uh, as I say that's tracking to the south southwest or southwest and will stay offshore at this at this stage with no real modelling suggesting that it will hit the coast. In fact let's have a quick overlay of the dynamical models on this image to have a look at where it's going. So you can see our dynamical models are now in fairly good agreement that the system will not hit the coast. It will continue down the southwest and eventually weaken uh, due to an increase in vertical wind shear and a decrease in sea surface temperatures and some dry air. And we'll show you some of that uh, in, the next, uh, in the next couple of slides. Okay, so as the system tracks further to the south-southwest, it's going to encounter an increase in wind shear. So you can see here 20 knots of wind shear, uh, grading to 30 knots of wind shear as it continues south-southwest and even increasing increasing further. Now cyclones will develop inside 20 knots of wind shear but once it gets outside of that 20 mark or outside of this 20 circle it'll start to weaken out. If we have a look at sea surface temperatures in the region if we overlay the track now on sea surface temperatures, we can see the cyclone has reasonable conditions, but because it's expected to stay offshore, the sea surface temperatures get pretty cold offshore as opposed to closer in to the coastline. Uh, so because the system's now expected to track a lot further offshore, anywhere sort of west of Coral Bay and the system starts to encounter sea surface temperatures that are less than ideal for its continued development and it will eventually weaken out because of that. So this is why we don't feel that Perth or or, or any place further south of that is under any real danger of, of a, a significant cyclonic impact. The other thing we've already mentioned is the uh, entrainment of dry air or dry, uh, the, the system basically pushing into this blue area and this blue area signals, or purple particularly, but blue area signals drier air in the atmosphere. And so where the system is at the moment, it's in a very, very ideal environment in terms of precipitate or precipitable water, so humidity in the atmosphere. Cyclones require a lot of moisture in the atmosphere to be able to continually fire up their thunderstorms around its middle. So as it tracks towards the southwest or south southwest it's expected to encounter less of that moisture and so it's going to make it harder and harder for the cyclone to be able to develop new thunderstorms around it so look the cyclones in ideal conditions for the next 24 hours but after that conditions steadily become worse for it and it should start to uh, weaken and particularly as it hits this drier air and more wind shear it'll weaken very rapidly once it gets west of about Coral Bay maybe a little bit further south maybe west of Carnarvon just one final image here I'd like to leave you with is the microwave image of the tropical cyclone. You can see a perfectly structured eye here around a, uh, surrounded by a very intense eye wall. Now the, the, the wind speeds in here well in excess of gusts of well in excess of 200 kilometres an hour in this eye wall. So you can see a very, very well defined eye on the microwave image as you saw on the satellite imagery. Look folks, that's where we're going to leave tropical cyclone Norel. We don't think she's going to be a direct threat to the coastline at this point in time. The modelling is all suggesting she won't be, uh, so we won't spend any more time on her tonight. Let's move on, let's move our attention now to the next potential tropical low or cyclone that will form off either the Northern Territory or around the Kimberley region, and that one looks like it could threaten the same region of WA in the longer term. Okay, the Northern Territory bomb are onto it. There are currently no lows in the region. A slow-moving monsoon trough is strengthening over the Arafura Sea. A weak low is expected to form within that trough and move slowly west towards the Timor Sea over the next few days. And the potentials for development of a cyclone are getting up to low, which is 5 to 20% on the Sunday and the Monday. Now, the WA bomb is also on the money with this because they are also saying the monsoon trough is expected to strengthen over the Timor and Arafura Sea. A weak low may form in that trough and move west early next week. The low is unlikely to develop into a cyclone during the next three days but will be monitored after that. So, And, and we'll show you now the modelling is, is pretty convincing that we're going to see another cyclone out there sometime next week. 
Okay, so if we look in two days' time here, this is the European Ensemble, and what we're looking for is dark purple shading on this map. And we can see this area of dark purple just offshore off the Tiwi Islands in the Arafura Sea, right where my cursor is right here. Now this is by Sunday, so some of the modelling is predicting a tropical low to form in this region by Sunday morning. Now by Monday we start to see a little bit more model, model consensus and, and, and it's a little bit more convincing from the modelling that we're going to see that low that was forming just off the Tiwis push towards the southwest and further developing just here off the North Kimberley coastline. The system rapidly pushes on Tuesday to the southwest and we can see here how, how quickly it's pushing out here to the southwest just to lie off the top or, or near the coast near Derby or Broome. So you can see here once again pretty convincing that the system will lie in this region but there is a little bit of larger error area here um, between anywhere from the North Kimberley to even the far eastern Pilbara region. At 120 hours which is five days next Wednesday we're starting to see general low pressure troughiness here over the northern parts of Australia and also we're starting to see a generalized area of low pressure here off the Pilbara or Kimberley coastline and that is the area that we are really watching for further development come late next week into a tropical cyclone. We see that lower tropical cyclone further forming on Thursday, uh, just off the North Pilbara, or just off, sorry, off the East Pilbara coastline, and just basically drifting more rather than moving to the west. Now we've also got a big high coming in underneath it around about the same time. So that's the area we're really watching, folks, and and this is an area once again, depending on when this high pushes in, depending on what's going on in the upper levels, will actually depend on whether this system actually makes the coastline and actually hits as a tropical cyclone late next week or next weekend. The other area then we're watching is the Gulf of Carpentaria. This low pressure region starts to form in the Gulf of Carpentaria late next week. That's an area that Queensland particularly and the eastern parts of the Northern Territory need to focus on because this could be the start of their monsoon or wet season which has been very very late so far. On Friday we continue to see that low pressure region here off the Pilbara coastline. Not really showing signs that it's hitting the coast just yet, but it is there and it's just drifting a little bit further to the west, uh, or the west-southwest. We also have that high starting to perch in underneath it at the time. And we've also got that Gulf of Carpentaria region we're really starting to watch by this stage. Uh, we've got a high pressure ridge here, we've got a high pressure ridge here, we've got a trough in through central Australia. So the only real way that that, that low, if it does form at the time, should be moving is towards the south or southeast at this stage rather than towards the west. But look, it's a long way ahead. If the trough doesn't form, if we just get one big high pressure ridge here, then uh, everything will continue moving west. So a lot of, a lot of um, uncertainty at this point in time. Being a, being a week out, that's to be expected. But these are the two areas we're watching. This one particularly off the Pilbara coastline because this one does have the potential to hit land. Uh, the one off, off the Gulf or in the Gulf of Carpentaria, that's certainly something we're watching in the longer term. And further than that, as we head towards the end of January and then into early February, we're watching the Coral Sea for potential development out there. And just to prove to you I'm not lying, here it is, Tropical Cyclone there on the Saturday next weekend, just off Headland, or just off Caratha, sorry, uh, just off the coast there, um, and fairly tight model agreement as to where it's going to be positioned at this point in time, but as I say, it is still seven, eight days away, so uh, we do have to take it with a grain of salt. We have a ridge over the Coral Sea, but we've got a trough over inland parts of, of Australia, and so that low or, or cyclone at this point in time in the Gulf is starting to push a little bit further to the southeast. That's great news for the Gulf country who haven't seen a wet season yet. Great news for the peninsula if it, if it comes off. And now just for uh, just for a quick look rather than rather than to to you know as an ac as an accurate model projection rather this is more of a just a brief idea of what the dynamics will be in 10 days time we see the ensemble modeling continuing to have that cyclone just off the coast of WA sort of just drifting it in the region without actually pushing it in any direction we also see that lower cyclone over the gulf is now over the far northern parts of Queensland and the peninsula and so uh, you know if this comes off this is going to be great news for the wet season for north and far north Queensland and it's also going to be great news for some more rain over the Pilbara and Kimberley. 
hopefully that cyclone that will form, or sorry, may form, uh, will not be too intense either. So um, at this stage, the modelling isn't suggesting anything more as intense as Norel yet, but it is still a long way away. So anything can happen in the meantime. I'll show you the GFS Ensemble quick. So, folks, this is the GFS Ensemble. So this is 20 models run by the GFS model in America. We can see, once again, a tropical cyclone off the Kimberley coastline just lingering there. If we fast forward then to next Friday... By next Friday, the GFS model develops this into a reasonably reasonably intense system. So you can see here, 992 is the ensemble, but you, you can see there's probably a Category 2 or Category 3 tropical cyclone just lingering off the Kimberley coastline next Friday. And so even though I said the European isn't making this an intense system, by next Saturday we have a, at least a Category 3 tropical cyclone in this region uh, off, the, off the Kimberley coast or the Pilbara coast according to GFS. Now please be aware that the GFS model does try to overcook things, uh, tries to spin up cyclones a lot more. That's why we use an ensemble and the ensemble suggests that it's still going to be a Cat 2 but there is potential there for some rapid development next week. Remember we, it's in an area of ridging. When we get cyclones that form in an area of ridging, they tend to form under really nice uh, surface and upper level conditions. So uh, we will need to watch this one very closely. We're not sure how strong the ridging is, so we're not sure. You can see the model here. The model's not sure whether this thing's pushing out to the west or whether it's just sitting there off the Kimberley and Pilbara coastlines. So definitely something to watch. Coral Sea at the moment, nothing in the foreseeable future, nothing in the next week or two. But as I say, for Queenslanders, the big area to watch is the Gulf of Carpentaria in the 8 to 12 day time frame particularly then after day 12 the system may push over the peninsula or into the north tropical coast region uh, and may dump a fair bit of rain as we go all right folks that's the end of our update tonight oh just before we go i'll just show you quickly according to the according to weather zone the GFS seven day rainfall forecast and we can see here Norel pushing offshore creating most of the rain offshore we can see here 60 to 90 mils pushing onshore over the next few days then we see the next cyclone which is just around about day five to day seven so it still hasn't really affected the coast but you can see here the rainfall associated with it massive amounts of rainfall we also see some interesting rain happening over inland Queensland along an, along an inland trough so that might, might finally bring them some relief from the heat. Or it's, it'll still be hot, in fact, but at least it'll bring them some relief through some thunderstorm activity and a bit of rainfall anyway. Not much of that getting onto the Queensland coast, though. Most of that will remain inland. And in the next seven days, this is very, very highly dependent on what goes on in the, in the Gulf of Carpentaria, obviously. But you can see here, massive amounts of rainfall here. The GFS model also has something spinning up here in the Coral Sea. But at this stage, that's the only model that's tipping that. The other, the other global models that are going that far ahead aren't tipping too much in the Coral Sea just yet. They're sort of more tipping the Coral Sea to fire early February. So really, folks, the area to watch, Kimberley, Pilbara, again, Gulf of Carpentaria, Western Cape York Peninsula in the long term is the area to watch. But the good news is the drought may start, maybe is finally breaking for far north Queensland in the longer term with some rain from that tropical low or cyclone possible in the very long term. Alright, thanks very much for watching tonight's update and we'll update you again tomorrow night, the 12th of January 2013.